I was born and raised in Joliet. Uh, grew up as a kid, probably first and second grade, playing basketball there. Um, then I moved to Lockport, uh, my fourth grade year. Uh, moved to Lockport, which is considered the hill where I moved. Um, and continued to play basketball. Basketball, growing up in the Chicago area, <clears throat> everyone had to be a fan of Michael Jordan. I grew up in that era of the, the six, the six peat or the three peat, the two time three peat bulls. So I always strived to be like Michael Jordan, strived to be like Scottie Pippen and these guys. Um, said, hey, we want to do something else. So we would always play sports. We would go and we would gather up and be leaders. And I would kind of lead the, 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 the entourage and say, hey, let's go play football. Let's go play basketball. And it got to a point where uh, being at Lockport, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, I started really getting really good because my older brother was he's four years older than me. I'm the uh, one of five middle child. My older brother uh, kept me around him and his friends. And and being a, a kid playing with guys four years older, when I started playing with kids around my or my my peers, I, I, I astonishingly was much much more better than them. So uh, and at that point. Um, I started realizing when it from sixth grade to like eighth grade, going into high school, I, I realized basketball was going to be uh, one of the focal points, the things that I really needed to focus on because I started getting height. I started growing taller than most of my peers and uh, I always had dedication and love for it. Um, and my eighth grade year, I could kind of say that's when I, I think all of my friends in the neighborhood and here in Lockport kind of knew I, I, was, I had some, some characteristics to be special. Me and this guy named Kevin Trock that came from Homer Glen, we kind of took the whole Lockport area over. And once I, it became like my senior, junior year in, in high school is where the Lockport Joliet rival became. And everybody came to see Orlando Tucker pretty much. And my friends always said it. And, you know, I hate to really talk like that because I'm far from a narcissist. But everyone came to see Orlando Tucker versus Joliet. And these were like, we had some of the best games. And those are, I talk around the, I played around the world. I played on every level, but some of the most memor memorable games in my, in my career is the Joliet Lockport rivalry games. And from there, man, it's just my career exploded. My career exploded out of high school from those games. And I got a chance to get, um, I was recruited by most of all the big 10 schools. Um, but the process was amazing. It's amazing when you, um, you work hard, when you work hard to get there, because uh, what kids fail to realize, I was doing a lot on court, but like my friend, my good friend that I talked about, Maurice, he saw me doing all the things off the court that I, I didn't really know was making me better. Like as, as opposed to when friends are playing around, they're doing things. I was in my backyard jumping rope or jumping boxes saying, hey, I want to go to college on this, on a scholarship. Want, my mother doesn't have the money to pay for it, so I want to make it on a free ride, you know? And once I got to like my sophomore, junior season, I was doing things like that. I was coming to school at six o'clock when school started at 6.45, I would have my mom drop me off at school before the teachers would get there and I would work. And that work started paying off when I started getting the letters and things from college. It's a different world. You have a lot of pressures on you because going to a university like that, you're not, you don't have to go to class if you don't want to. But if you don't go to class, there are consequences. So in high school, you're made, you're made to go. But on, on a university where they have hundreds of kids and maybe one uh, class, um, as opposed to like going to a junior college where it's more focused because you have 20 kids, you know, if you don't go to class and you don't focus, you can easily, easily fall off and you don't do your grades, you won't play. So it becomes a big responsibility and, and you get this on, you grow. You have to grow very quick. And, and along with that, as a student athlete, we had to get up in the mornings before class, six in the morning. We're running, we're running hills, and we're running, we're lifting weights. So we're doing more than that, you know, uh, average students would do. And then a lot of times, I knew guys would do other jobs to work on the side to try to make money um, here and there. When I was in, around the time I was going, um, so you have triple the responsibility as opposed to just having to uh, to, to just do schoolwork. I worked out for the Phoenix Suns. I worked out against Rodney Stuckey, uh, Corey Brewer, and I forget the, the other guy that was in the workout. 
But I, I dominated that workout. Dominated, totally dominated the workout. And I remember D'Antoni, Coach D'Antoni told me, he said, kids, you won't be around for our pick, but if you are, we're definitely taking you. And I'm just like looking, and I, it's, at the same time, like I said, I'm in this bubble, so I'm going through it, so it's not really, it's not really phasing me. I'm like, okay, great, great, cool, understand. I'm just like, okay, I have to go to my next workout. Next workout, I go to, to New York. I didn't want to go to that workout. Someone was telling me, I don't want to do this workout. Um, end up going through the workout, getting knee in my quad and having a contusion, like the size of a fist in my, in my quad. So that ended my workouts for the whole, that ended my workouts until the draft. So my stock started dropping. My stock started dropping. And so on draft night, I was just a nervous wreck. I'm talking to my agent. I'm like, where am I going to go? Teams were kind of scared. Um, they're like, because of Wisconsin style of play, Wisconsin style of play, which was a slow down style of play. The NBA didn't know if I can adjust to the NBA style. They knew I was a great player, but they wanted to see it. Phoenix Suns had a firsthand uh, sight of what I could do inside the workout. So they're like, yo, you're going to be something special. Um, then I end up, you know, I'm sitting there, lottery goes, every, the first 14 picks go. I'm not in there and I'm just sweating. I'm in a locker room. My whole family, we're all in the, we're all in the hotel. We're all in the hotel right across and they're, they're calling the names out. I'm steady talking to my agent. He's like, yo, you may go next. Be ready. I'm talking to this team, this team. And it's like, okay, don't worry. You didn't go yet. It comes to like the last picks of the, the, the draft and they're steady saying, oh, who's out on the board? Who's still on the draft board? And they're like, hey, whoever gets, you know, Lando Tucker's still out there. You know, somebody's going to get a steal if they get this guy. So I get a call like at the 27th pick. Like, and my agent's like, hey, I think Phoenix is going to take you. They're really sold on you, what you did with your workout, and they're saying they're going to take you. And I still, I had heard that like five other times. So I was in there like, oh, whatever, man. I'm kind of looking down, and I see my brother and my family, my mom, and I'm starting to look worried because I'm looking down. And then I get 28th pick comes up, and then Phoenix Suns pick come up. They said their call is on the board. My agent calls me again. He said, I got somebody on the phone for you. And it was uh, Steve Kerr from the, uh, he was actually GM of the Phoenix Suns at the time. They talked to me, they said, yeah, we're taking you. So how does it feel to, to leave the snow and come to the sun? And man, that feeling, the, the feeling that came through my, my, my body, surreal, once again, surreal, just like a, kid, a small kid from Lockport, Joliet area, being drafted. Being drafted, my dreams finally coming true, everything I've always worked for to achieve, it's here. This is this is the day. This is it. This is the moment. Architect basketball is pretty much an empowerment um, to every individual, and it, it is not limited to basketball. But I use basketball as my vehicle because it's what I do great. So eventually, it's going to turn into architect sport or architect lifestyle. And architect empowers every individual to actually hear themselves call themselves an architect to know that they're their own brand you're your own brand so i empower my son to say you're your own brand as a coach as trainers we only can build you a blueprint but we can't take you to the next level you have the ability to do that so i empower them and i give them that because a lot of these things a lot of times on the aau systems and in these high school systems when you come to these elite high school programs the coaches manipulate the kids to feel like they need them I want the kids to understand that they're their own brand. But when you become your own brand, a lot of responsibility comes with that. So you need to understand education comes with that, um, dedication, determination, discipline. So we kind of teach these principles and how, and we mix them in with the elite training. So we train kids from kindergarten to professional and, and how to um, behave off of the court. We surround them with bankers, surround them with teachers. I like to surround kids with um, so many different people from different walks of life, but maybe all started from sport or the love of sport. And it showed how they had this discipline to build them. And so what happens is an architect, we may not all go to be pro, but we can build our, our foundation strong enough with hard, through hard work, dedication, and this discipline and determination to, to be successful in any aspect of life or any walk of life that we choose. So I really can't coin a term on what I'm doing, man. I really, I wanna inspire so many people. I think that's my path. I used to think my path was going to the NBA and every time I would like do successful, even playing basketball, I thought that was my path and I'm like, you know, every time um, I've been successful or had a chance to, to, to ex explode and go to that next level, I've been grounded by injuries, what it was, and I think it brought me to this because now that I've been focused on this path, everything's been working in, in, in my fortune to be able to bring some of the ideas that I have 
more so than any other thing I've ever put in the work on the court. It's, I think it's to inspire. And I think my whole life has been to inspire. Uh, I've inspired so many of my friends. I've inspired, I hear stories of my story because I've grew up and I've, in this environment, even in an environment in the NBA, um, you grow up around a lot of partying and different things of that nature, drinking. Um, I've never drank, never smoked, never tattooed my body. Um, and these were vows I made as a young kid to stand out and be different. And so by me doing that and standing out and be different, I've inspired a lot of kids to say, hey, I can come in, I can grow up in any environment, but um, I don't have to succumb to that environment. Whether good or bad things, I can be, I can be myself, be cool with it, and make, you know, being, make being different cool. And that's kind of what I stand for. And I think that's what my, 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 my uh, I think that's my purpose.